So I wanted to make a video about uh, truck frames and, and, and bending frames, right? There's several videos out there with a Colorado with a bent frame. But this is and a Gladiator. But this has been an issue with other trucks, if you didn't know. Uh, so I found some information on that, and I'm going to post links or I'm going to post clips from what I found out there just to show you. And then some commentary from some other YouTubers out there on uh, exactly why these think why this is happening and it's typically happening to the crew cab trucks right crew cabs loaded down and towing trailers off highway okay there's like three components there okay and there's a force yeah there's a force so in case you guys didn't know, this is my 2018 Colorado 4x4 Crew Cab LT version. Okay, I've done all the upgrades to the suspension myself, so uh, everything's good, everything's working for me. Uh, I don't plan on pulling a trailer, but I do, ha I do load it down, right? I'm hitting uh, 5,600 pounds right now, just the way it is with nothing in the rear of the truck other than uh, my auxiliary battery. 5,600 pounds, the max uh, GVWR is 6,000, I think, around there. So when I'm loaded up, I'm sure I'm pretty close to that. So one thing you guys gotta remember is that these trucks are light duty vehicles. These are not three quarter ton vehicles with heavy duty frames and everything on there. So uh, keep that in mind, they're light duty. So even at maximum load, should be fine around town. But when you load them up, pulling trailers off road, they're gonna take a pound in and that's when things are gonna give out. So just remember that. You gotta be careful when you're out there driving. What I've found on my uh, you know research there is that yeah, most of the trucks that been, they're either overloaded or they're pulling trailers off-road, remember that. And the frames are bending past here, past the uh, Leaf Spring Mountain. Leaf Spring Mountain's about right there. And on this particular model, I'll show you close-ups close of that right now. From a ZR2, bent in his frame, right? And he was pulling a trailer. So he, there's a hole right there, right after a cross member on the frame and the frame's just kinking kink so uh i was looking into a, a a way to reinforce the frame so it doesn't kink like that right so i'm not i'm not reinventing the wheel here guys you know this has been done before but not to not colorado specific so i figured heck i'll make my own let's let's try to make my own okay Let's try, right? You don't know until you try, right? So I'll try. So, so I made my own plates. Uh, here's my first prototype right here, okay? This is the cross member. It's reinforced. Uh, and the area of bending was right around here. The, the frame kinks right there, Boop, like a banana, right? Yeah. So I probably didn't have to make it this long, but I figured, hey, let's spread that load out through the frame, okay? And not, no need to go further if it's kinking right there because there's issues with overplating too. So I'll bring that up too. Uh, one guy suggests, yeah, if you put plate it too much, you're just gonna transfer that load to somewhere else, right? So the bend, instead of bending there, it's gonna bend someplace else. Well, let's find out, right? Like I said, I don't drive aggressively off-road because I can't afford damage, so I, I try to be conservative. When I was younger, I used to drive like a nut, and I've broken everything. Ball joints, diffs, you know. I've done it. So, uh, yeah, so I got it plated, but the other issue I found with these trucks is there's a lot of flex between the cab and the bed, okay? So the frame 
on this side is about eight inches thick. And then right here after the uh, leaf spring mount, it goes up and it chokes down to about three and a half, maybe four inches. So I'm like, hmm. This rides on rubber bumpers. This rides bolted direct to the frame. So there will be a bit of flex in between there, but I thought it was excessive. Okay. So that was my that was my second project. Okay, how do we stiffen that up? Without removing the whole bed, I don't want to go get that involved. This plate can be welded on right here the way it is. You just got to take the tire off. So that worked out pretty good. Oh, I also got some comments out there about welding to the frame, okay? Uh, I looked into that too, okay? Um, one guy out there told me, oh, you need to weld front to back and not top to bottom. I go, what's he talking about? What you talking about, Willis? You mean horizontal, vertical, 90 degrees to the frame, right? So that was something I took into consideration. Yes, I did see your comment out there and I took that into consideration. Uh, one, uh, one, one thing I was, I read is that you want to weld it all the way up and around to seal it up. You don't want moisture getting between this plate and the frame, right? <laughs> hmm. That's something to take into consideration. But if you do that, then you got to weld up the ends, right? Now this one guy says, if you weld up the ends like that, right? On a vertical, the frame's gonna crack right there. Hmm. I don't know. But yeah, we'll take that into consideration, right? I also read you don't wanna weld to frames. <laughs> because these are cold rolled steel and cold rolled steel is brittle. And now you're welding to it, you're applying heat, the heat and cooling process, you know? I'm like, wow. But you know what, I've seen it done. So uh, let's give it a shot, right? That's, that's the only, that's the reason why I'm doing this. Let's see what we can do. So uh, I've got it plated. I've got it reinforced past the cross member. Now I was going to plate that too, but that's more involved and there's not a whole lot of room to get to, to get in there with the bed on there. So I'm like, no, let's keep this simple. I got a, I had a suggestion out there from one of you guys to just weld some angle on there. Let's try that, you know? So I took that from my plate down, I put some angle in there. I was able to get some angle in there from underneath. I had, there, there's, a, there's a fender. There's a fender cover on the inside right here. A sheet metal fender cover. Plus inside there's fender liner. I took that plastic liner out and I took that little cover off here to access them. So we'll just see what happens from now on. It's on. Like I said, I didn't want to eliminate all the flex because then you're just transferring that movement somewhere else down the line. So I think I stiffened it up a little. I'm going to have to run some tests again and see if I made a difference. But that's what's going on. You guys can uh, check the channel uh, sometime later, either today or tomorrow. I'll post like the first part of this thing. Um, I did want to make up some more plates. I want you well, let me know what you think first of all because uh, I wanted to make out some more of these plates and uh, we'll try them on some other Colorados, right? I'm not going to do the welding because I'm no uh, certified welder, but you know, uh, there's a couple guys out there, you know, with uh, Colorados, you know, I'll give you a set to try. Like I said, uh, you're probably not going to notice any difference, but it is going to beef up where that, uh, where the frame bends right there. We'll see. 
that's what I want. That's how I want to get some of your input here. Hey out there guys, it is still Monday, yeah, Monday, uh, September 14th, and it's 8.49. I've been editing a video right now, and I just wanted to add this. Um, this is all about bent frames and all that, and so in this video, this is from Australia, this is uh, auto expert John Cattlegan from Australia, and he's speaking about the issues of bending frames, mainly in this video. The Mitsubishi Triton, okay, so just keep that in mind. I got another video to share for you from Australia. I might post this, I might not, but check out his channel sometime. He rambles on a lot, but uh, I find it interesting, so I tried saving this specifically just for you. Say that Triton is not specifically predisposed to bending the chassis. I'd suggest that all utes are kind of more or less equally vulnerable to this problem or at least susceptible okay so there is an inherent susceptibility to utes they have more or less a weak spot in between the back of the cab and the leading edge of the tray because you know in a vehicle with a separate chassis, the vehicle where the body is bolted onto the chassis and rubber mounted or something, then that contiguous body over the top of the vehicle does act as a contributor of sorts to rigidity in that longitudinal bending plane. That plane that's going to turn the vehicle into a banana this way or that way, whichever if you get it all horribly wrong with the loading and in particular the dynamic loading that you might make the vehicle experience out there on some you know dodgy road in the outback so not specifically a triton problem in fact if you google in the image domain bent chassis triton you will find one here's one now and another <laughs> and another and I have to ask you does any of this look like a good idea even remotely like a good idea it reeks of overloading dynamically overloading right but if you google bent chassis triton in the image domain you will also see this and pretty clearly Navara does this early spec and late model Navara and this ute that I haven't identified mainly because I didn't try at all but not a Triton because the rear of the cab is the wrong shape and even the mighty Schittsville Humvee is susceptible to bananaization in this way. 